Hi, my name is Brenda Baca. I work here at Sunless Silver. I've been here for about 12 years now, and I run the stone department, so I work with the cabochons, the rough turquoise, and the strands. So today we're going to do a video, and I'm going to help you distinguish uh, the grades of turquoise from a high grade, mid grade, and low grade. Each mine has its own characteristics, and every single mine is going to produce something a little bit different, which makes it very unique and special in its own way. And it also helps you as the buyer um, figure out where it came from, depending on the matrix, the color, and what mineral, minerals um, are within that area. And also, it'll help you distinguish the grades. So um, first, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go over some of the cabochons. Now, cabochons are a cut and polished finished stone. A lot of silversmiths and jewelers use them in their jewelry. Um, some are freeform, some are calibrated, which is basically cut to a certain size or shape. Normally when they cut freeform shapes uh, within a cabochon, what they do that for is to try and keep the majority of the turquoise without having to use or get rid of so much waste. So you're going to get a nice, beautiful, natural formation rather than a perfect clean cut. Um, Carrico Lake, which is our baby, it produces around 17 different shades of blues and greens. Now keep that in mind when purchasing turquoise because there are going to be certain variations of color uh, within the stones. Carrico, for instance, produces a high grade turquoise called um, apple green turquoise. Here is a piece of high-grade Carrico Lake. What makes this high-grade is the color. It's a very rare and unique green, which Carrico Lake is known for. Also, the hardness. Carrico is one of the very few turquoise on the market that ranges over a 5 on the, the moss hardness scale. Now, typically, turquoise will range between a 4, 4.5, four 5, 5.5, five which is extremely um, hard considering, you know, turquoise is very soft in general. But Carrico can get up to a six. And a lot of times it won't even take a stabilization process because of the hardness. It's, it doesn't need it. Um, when purchasing high grade turquoise, an important factor is to know the grade, the quality, and the hardness. And also the color is very important because you want a very rich and true tone when purchasing high-grade turquoise. Now, where the cost comes in is very important. A lot of people don't understand that turquoise is very valuable, it is very rare, and it is also one of the few stones or minerals that have been used for thousands and thousands of years. So just that alone, that's what makes turquoise very valuable. Now there are different grades to turquoise, which I mentioned earlier. There's a high grade, a mid grade, and a low grade. Just like when you're purchasing any other stones like diamonds or um, basically anything in general on the market. Now when you're dealing with grades, there's things to look for. So as we saw before, this is a high grade Carrico. You see that the colors are very true, very rich, and very defined. And that's very important when you're purchasing high grade. You don't want to pay a high price for something like this. Um, this is what you're going to see when you're getting a high price. Now, high grade Carrico can go easily for $15 to $20 on the market. And it will gradually increase just because of the rarity of the color and uh, the, stone in, the stone in general is very precious and valuable. Now, here we have a mid grade. Now you can start to see the other tones that Carrico produces. Now this is not a bad quality turquoise. It's actually still very good. And it's more common um, rather than the high grade greens that you see because a very small percentage of high grade comes out of each mine. So this is a mid grade. You'll see more of this particular type. This is great to use um, in jewelry, especially if you're gonna be using or making jewelry that um, isn't considered extremely high end. Now, low grade turquoise is what you're gonna see here. It's gonna have a lot of either chert rock or host rock, um, which the minerals actually bond to and create the turquoise that's, that forms. Now you'll see a lot of host rock in low grade, um, which is little flickers of color. Now this is okay to use. It's not gonna be um, a high quality or high price stone, 
But if you're just beginning, I highly recommend uh, buying something on um, this degree first, just so that way you can practice and it won't be a total loss if you happen to um, damage your, your piece in the making. Now, when we're talking about turquoise, I know a lot of people uh, think that Native American jewelry uses American mined turquoise. That's absolutely not true. Turquoise is mined all over the world, and that's very important to understand and know, and that does not devalue it by any means. Every single place in the world has a high grade, mid grade, and low grade. So when we're talking about turquoise from all over the world, SunWest is known for having a huge selection in turquoise, uh, rough and cabochons, as well as strands. But I want you to see and understand the different types of colors and the different types of, um, I guess, host rock is what you would say, that form in different regions of the world. Now, you already saw Carico. Now, let's step into some Egyptian turquoise. Egyptian turquoise forms a very rich blue tone, which you'll see here. Now, copper tends to turn turquoise blue, and that's why you get that super rich color. It's a chemical reaction that happens naturally within the earth, and it produces these beautiful, rich tones. Now, with this particular turquoise, this is considered a high grade. So when you're purchasing high grade, like I said before, it's the color, the richness of the tones of the color, and also the matrix plays a very deep role in within this. And when I say matrix, that basically means the pattern of the host rock within the turquoise stone. Some, some people prefer little to no matrix, and some people prefer a very um, good amount of matrix with beautiful pattern, um, with a beautiful pattern on it, um, because it makes the stone more interesting. It could make the stone more valuable depending on what mine it comes from. And, um, you know, it's also personal preference. Now, this is Egyptian rough. Egyptian rough has a beautiful red copperish color to the outside of it. When you polish it up, uh, for instance, this one has a little window, you'll be able to see the inside of that piece. Normally, when you can see little flickers along the outside of blue, that normally entails that it is blue all the way through, which is a, a good indication that you have a nice solid piece of turquoise. But look at the difference in the variation of color and matrix. Egyptian has a very red copperish matrix within the stone. Royston over here will have more of, of a browner color, uh, more of an earthy tone. And Royston comes out of Nevada just like Carico Lake does. But Royston is, gonna, um, is known for producing very beautiful greens and blues, and also those two color colors merging together within one stone. Like I said before, every mine will have its own characteristics, and that's what makes it unique. Now, when purchasing calibrated stones, there are certain things that you need to look for. Most calibrated stones will fit within a certain size bracket. For instance, a five by seven is a common size, or a five millimeter round is a common size. So when purchase, purchasing stones like this, normally <laughs> most jewelers want to look for clarity and they want to look for a nice clean cut. So that way, in case you don't want to hand wrap your bezel and you want to buy pre-made bezels or cast bezels, it'll fit perfectly in with no issue at all. Here we have some Compitos turquoise, which comes out of Mexico near the Sonora Desert. Compitos is very consistent in color, and a lot of silversmiths or jewelers that like nice, clean, simple designs tend to lean towards mines like this because it's a lot easier to pair the stones. There's not as much waste involved when it comes to getting nice, clear, clean, solid color stones, and the color is always really nice. That's, that's also important when making, for instance, a cluster ring where all of the stones need to match. It's not going to be too time consuming to pair everything up. But if you look at the calibrated stones, you can see how perfectly um, cut they are. And each one is uniformed within that size. So it makes it easier for you as the buyer to purchase calibrated if they're nice clean cut stones. Now over here we have Newlander. Newlander is not considered a turquoise 
it's considered a form of either calcasiderite or a vericite, depending on what minerals were in that particular batch when it was mined or in that area. Newlander is another mine that, that we own and operate. It's also located in Nevada, Nevada near Lander County. And this particular stone is actually very popular on the market right now. It has increased in price over the past couple of years, which makes it a more sought after stone. As you can see, this particular stone hosts a, a rock called chert rock. Chert rock is going to be more of a black coloring within the stone. It's, um, it is a host stone, so that is what the minerals in that particular area bond, bond to. When purchasing new lander in a cabochon formation or even a calibrated formation, things to look for are the pattern within the stone and the clarity of the color. Now, new lander is going to have a lot of matrix. That's what makes it very unique. If you are wanting to try new lander in your jewelry, Things to look for when purchasing a cabochon is the color and also the matrix within the stone. Now Newlander does pr produce a lot of matrix which makes it very unique and also very desirable because of the patterns that it forms. It's almost like a, a webbed look if, if that's what you would like to call it. Now everyone has a personal preference. Some people like more of the light milkier colors or it also dips into more of a bluish color, almost like a vericite color. So if you are buying Newlander, always keep in mind that clarity is very important with color and the formation of the pattern on the rock. Now I just want you to keep in mind when purchasing calves on the market that it's okay to purchase stabilized turquoise or Newlander, for instance. Just because it's stabilized doesn't devalue it at all. Turquoise in general is very soft. It's actually very coarse. And a lot of times it's chalky, so you can actually crumble it or break it apart easily. So the stabilization process is actually very important when it comes to turquoise. What it does is it bonds the turquoise together and makes it more easier for you as the silversmith or jeweler to be able to work with it, cab it, and set it into jewelry without it fracturing or breaking. Also what's very important is when you're buying natural turquoise that you make sure that the natural turquoise that you're purchasing is not soft or coarse because when you do cab it, it has a higher risk of breaking or fracturing. Um, normally high grade turquoise will not have to be stabilized because it's hard enough on its own. Once again, it's that small percentage that comes out of each mine that is considered a high grade turquoise, but the majority of that is going to be nice and hard on its own, which won't even take a stabilization process to begin with. Now, when we're talking about stabilization, a lot of people may not know what that term means. What it is, is it's basically a dehydration process of the, of the turquoise rough, which for instance, we have a natural piece of Royston right here. Now, if this piece of Royston was considered a low grade, what they would do is they would actually dehydrate the stone, pull all of the moisture out of the, the pores, basically soak it in an epoxy, which basically fills into the pores, bonds it, and then they heat treat it. That way the stone becomes nice and hard all on its own. Then from there, you can cab it, you can drill it, you can do just about anything with it without it giving you issues um, in that process. Thank you for tuning in. If you're interested in, in taking a look or purchasing some of the cabochons or turquoise rough that we have available, please feel free to visit us on our Instagram page at Sunless Silver. And if you have any questions, you can also call into the store located in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Thank you for tuning in. If you're interested in, in taking the book, one more time. <laughs> That's fine. With it, without it giving it issue, or without so the stabilization process is actually very important in, in, in the blah, blah, blah.